Hey guys, Josh here, and in this video I would like to talk about a game I've been playing recently called A Little Witch in the Woods, tell you what I like about this game so far, describe the gameplay loop and feel of the game, and hopefully this will help you decide if this one is for you. Little Witch in the Woods is a cozy, casual, crafting and exploration game developed by Sony Side Up, a small game development studio based in South Korea, who gave me the chance to try out their game and who are also sponsoring this video, letting me give you my first impressions on this experience. I've actually been interested in this game for a while now and I talked about it in a video about upcoming games last year, so I'm glad it is finally available in early access on Steam and Game Pass since May 16, 2022. Let's start by talking about the story which plays an important part in this game, you take the role of Ellie, an apprentice witch who just got out of witch school, and she takes the train heading towards the city of High Lion, but she accidentally ends up in the woods where she stumbles upon a witch's house and decides to stay there to complete her apprenticeship right outside a little abandoned village called Wisteria. The story is simple yet captivating and the most interesting part is certainly the dialogues. As you help rebuilding the abandoned village, you will encounter many different characters, each with their distinct appearance and personality, and even though this game does have a lot of dialogue, the developers managed to include jokes or funny situations in most of them in order to keep things interesting, so it never feels too heavy or overwhelming. Ellie also has a magic hat called Virgil, who not only serves as a companion giving hints on what to do next, but I also found the dynamic between him and Ellie quite interesting, they're often annoyed with each other, and to be fair I would also be annoyed if I had a talking hat on my head 24-7, but it's all in a light-hearted, humorous way, and you can tell a lot of effort was put into each line of dialogue, as well as the translation, considering that the original language is Korean. I think that light-hearted and humorous are words that describe the overall narrative of this game pretty well, it's just very cozy. Speaking of cozy, I think the graphics, music, and the atmosphere of this game as a whole is what I like the most about it. The pixel art here is beautifully executed, of course there's Ellie who's just so adorable in both her dialogue portraits and her character sprite, there was also a lot of care put into the animations, for example when she runs, or when she squishes the squishy chubs to collect their fur. Also, even though most of the game takes place in the woods, the environments manage to look varied from one another, for example in some areas you'll be deeper in the forest and you'll really feel surrounded by trees and everything's quite dark, whereas other areas are more open and filled with light. There's also quite a bit to explore as you unlock areas and shortcuts little by little, and I got lost a few times at first, but you get used to your surroundings after playing for a little while. The music and sound effects also contribute to the game's cozy and relaxing atmosphere, and my favorite sound effect has to be when you bump into things with your flying broom. It's just so satisfying for some reason that I bump into things just to hear it. Now of course we need to talk a little bit about the gameplay. I would describe Little Witch in the Woods as a crafting game more than anything else, Basically the gameplay loop is like this, so you encounter an obstacle such as vines blocking the way, you'll then have to gather information to figure out a way to get rid of them, so you'll talk with the different characters who will give you some hints, you'll then learn that you need a specific potion, so you'll go out in the woods, gather the different ingredients, so some ingredients can only be acquired at a specific time of day or with a specific tool. By the way you can add all of these items to your encyclopedia, so if you ever forget where or how to get something, you can check your encyclopedia. So once you've gathered the ingredients, you'll go back to your house, where you can process them with the extractor or the roaster, and after that you'll put them in the cauldron, where you'll have to select the correct heat and steering direction for the potion you're making, and then you'll have your potion. Then you can go back to the source of the problem, use your potion to fix it, and that is the core gameplay loop, allowing you to progress in the story. There's also a few other things you can do, such as selling your potions to merchants in order to make some money, and then you can use that money to upgrade your workshop, allowing you for example to process more ingredients at once, or to buy new potion recipes. According to the developer, there's about 5 hours of content in the early access version of this game right now, but I've been playing for a bit more than that and I still have things to do. In the full version, we can expect over 20 hours of gameplay, which I believe makes it fully worth the current $15.99 price tag. So lastly, I would like to discuss the early aspect of the game, Buying games in early access is always a bit scary because they can often have bugs, incomplete features, and you never know when and how they will be updated or the direction the game will take. However, I have to say that so far I've been fairly impressed by how the developers have been handling their game. In just over 3 days, almost 10 patches have been released. Most of them are pretty small and fix a few bugs, while others directly address feedback from the players. For example, at first Ellie's movement was quite slow, even while riding on the broom, but now she's considerably faster which makes exploring the different areas and 
going back and forth to your house way more enjoyable. They also added an autosave feature every morning when you leave the house, which reduces the possibility of accidentally losing progress. And they've also expanded the storage space, which I really appreciate because at first it was extremely limited and I often had to throw away ingredients since you need to collect a lot of different things for potions. So in just three days, a lot of things have been improved and if the developers keep going in this direction and listening to feedback, I'm confident that it's not only safe to say the early access is worth it, but also that the final game will be a great product. However, just keep in mind that this game is still in early access, so you may still encounter some bugs, but overall, I think they're doing a pretty good job. And to conclude, Little Witch in the Woods is off to a great start. It's a very cute game with a funny and laid back story, a relaxing atmosphere, a simple gameplay loop about collecting ingredients and brewing potions, and with frequent updates addressing bugs and player feedback, I can definitely see this game being a great option for players looking for a fun and casual crafting game. So have you played Little Witch in the Woods yet? Please let me know your thoughts about this game in the comment. Leave a like and subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this, and I'll see you all in the next video.